thank you this day for it is surely the day the Lord has made and we rejoice even in this uh, heavy weather we ask your blessing your favor on everybody that uh, uh, has come to attend this meeting thank we you, pray Jesus. your anointing upon our midst the spirit of the living God come upon Amen. this place right now yes, our Lord. worship and the word and everything Hallelujah. that's said and done bring glory to glory yourself God. today we invite you right now Lord we will say it is good Hallelujah. In the house of the Lord. Everybody said amen. 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 Let's worship God tonight.
that he's coming back. All right, Isaiah chapter 64. Start at verse 1. When you get there, say amen or look up. <laughs> oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. As fires burns, as fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things for which we did not look, you came down. The mountains shook at your presence. Father, we pray that you would open our hearts to receive this morning your precious word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 64, basically Isaiah is doing a reflection. Talking about the good old days. How many remember the good old days? How many don't have any idea what, the, what we're even talking about? These kids, I mean, let me tell the kids what we're talking about. The good old days, that's a term used when referring to better times in the past. And a lot of us can sit here this morning and say, I remember the good old days. Reminiscing about the good old days is a, sometimes it's a lot of fun to do. The good old days were always better than they are now. Or maybe they're not. Even I can remember filling up the tank for 19 cents a gallon. That's way good old days. What do you say? They have what we call gas wars and uh, out of the Bay Area of Florida and Tampa and we would go down in our pickup truck and a 55 gallon barrel and fill it up with gas to bring it back up. We get arrested for that nowadays and we can try to build a bomb. <laughs> I can remember when chicken was 29 cents a pound. I worked at the butcher shop, I know. Tomato soup was 10 cents a can. McDonald's had hamburgers, 10 for a dollar. You remember that? We used to, we used to travel across the country looking for McDonald's. Bread was 24 cents. <laughs> Milk was 62 cents. Stamps. We just bought some stamps because they're going up again. What are they up to now? A lot. A lot. <laughs> they're up more than they were before. <laughs> but I can remember when they were three cents yes. and six cents. The average car was $2,500. If you wanted to upgrade and get an eight track tape player in it, that cost you an extra 40 bucks. That's the good old days. White wall tires were $13. Things were better back then, or were they? I made a dollar and twenty cents an hour. Man, I see them advertising nineteen dollars an hour all over town. Uh, yeah, 
No wonder their hamburgers are gone up. <laughs> In the good old days, there was no such thing as bath salts. I didn't know what bath salts were. <laughs> I mean, we, we had Bath Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave your doors unlocked. You, you can go all over town, leave your doors unlocked. Leave your doors unlocked in some cases with a note on the front door. If you need something, go and help yourself. <laughs> Nowadays, you sit in the living room with your doors locked. <laughs> Uh, afraid of a home invasion. Yeah, don't tell them that part. With your gun on your knife. Yep. It was a time when we all said the Pledge of Allegiance. In our school days. No one ever thought about stomping the flag or burning it. There was no ISIS, there was no Hamas, no Al-Qaeda, or suicide bombers. Things were better back then. Well, that's what Isaiah is doing in 64. He's reminiscing about the good old days. He's thinking, up, he's thinking back to how good it used to be. Now, I will tell you, I can think back and one of the major issues got tabled this year at general convention or a recent convention those of you that were following it how many assembly god ministers we have in here gladys uh, everybody else moved away <laughs> but uh the fourth amendment dealing with the rewording of our constitution or of our uh, doctrinal statements they were going through a redoing of them, and uh, it caught a lot of flack because people don't want to change. Now, I'm not against change, trust me. But I find it, I, I do struggle with change because I like things the way I know it. Yes. I have people all the time say, try this brand of coffee. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's only one brand of coffee. Folgers. I mean, when you got the best, why try the rest? But that there was such a conflict over that this year until they decided to withdraw the resolution. But I do think some of the things in our church past was better than it is now. Yeah. I can remember going to revival meetings. Now they teach you not even to call them revival meetings. Call them a conference. Call them a seminar. Don't call them a revival. That's old-fashioned. So here he was reminiscing. I, Isaiah felt that it was the time was right for God to do something again. He wanted God to do something again. There goes a pretty little girl that was in everybody's arms this morning. <laughs> I don't know who she was, but she belonged to everybody this morning. <laughs> I think it's time, the time is right for God to do some things again Amen. that he used to do. Amen. I believe that. I will read this again to you from another version. It says, oh, that you would rip open the heavens, verse 7, that you would rip open the heavens, descend, make the mountains shudder at your presence as when a forest catches fire. As when fire makes a pot to boil, to shock your enemies into facing you, 
to make the nation shake in their boots. You did terrible things we never expected. Descended and made the mountains shudder at your presence. Since before time begun, no one has ever imagined. No ear heard, no eye seen, a God like you who works for those who wait for him. We sing a song around here, I will wait for you. Are you willing to wait for God to move? We're all talking about, oh, I want to see God move. Are you willing to do your, last week, I talked about, are you really ready? Are you prepared for revival? Are you doing what you need to do for revival? Part of that is waiting on God. Yeah. Things are so terribly wrong in this world. And it's filled with incredible problems. As we look around, we can't get a straight answer. I don't care what news you turn on, you cannot get a straight answer on anything. I, I, I don't know what the CDC stands for, uh, what, is, uh, what is for this week, what is against this week, what the requirements are. It's amazing. Jobs, and this is a unique time, jobs everywhere and no one to work. I can remember other times, before my time, there was something they called a depression. That's right. When they had no work and everybody wanted a job. If we're not careful, my friend, we are, we are headed in the same direction. We have the same formula that they, they had back then. We're headed for some monstrous inflation. Your wage will not be able to keep up with it. The forces that opposed that are opposed to God's word and to God's people are powerful and they're persistent. They're wearing, are trying to wear us, and in some cases they are wearing us down, drop by drop, advertisement by advertisement, ballot issue by ballot issue, court case by court case. He said, all oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. The way you used to come down in the good old days. Set a fire. Boil some water. Shake the mountains. Do it again, O Lord. Shake the earth and send revival. Do it again, God. Like we used to have it. The prophet Isaiah lived in a time when Israel was in a backslidden condition. Her cup of iniquity had become almost full and she was soon to be carried away and the captive to a heathen land. There were mountains of difficulties in the way of God's works. Let, let me tell you something. Doesn't matter how big the problem gets, God can still handle it. Doesn't matter how bad it looks, God can still handle it. The people were divided and nothing it seemed could bring them together. We, almost the same and it seems that history always seems to repeat itself and 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 people are still divided against themselves what can bring them a politician can't bring them together a political party that's not my phone <laughs> whoever it is answer tell them I'll call them back later <laughs> Boy, everybody's got a phone this morning. Jesus is calling. Can we figure out whose that is and turn it off, please? Thank you. <laughs> All right. I saw a preacher preaching one Sunday, and he in a Phone went off, he confiscated it. 
Yeah, so, uh, yeah. We don't do that around here yet. <laughs> <laughs> As you look at their lives, and you look at our lives today, not a whole lot has changed. Mm -hmm. And there's no political party that can solve it. Nope. I keep getting people sending me. And don't stop if you're saying, I appreciate it, I love reading them. But I keep getting people sending me prophecies of how God is going to change things. And I'm not saying that God's not going to, I'm saying only God can change it. Right. Only God can change it. You and I can't change it. The prophet can't change it. An apostle can't change it. A pastor can't change it. But God Almighty can change some things. But the worst thing about this movement of this time was their lukewarmness. That's the hardest thing in the world with which to deal with. Somebody that's lukewarm. Their adversaries are ridiculing and mocking saying, where's your God? These taunts didn't trouble Israel very much because there was very little fear of God among the people. In the midst of this situation, Isaiah perceived that if God could come down one more time, that is, if He could manifest His presence, it would solve every problem of the nation. I got news for you. If revival would sweep our nation, if I will revival and sweep our and it's got to start in the churches it's got to start in you it's got to start in me but if revival would sweep our nation it would solve these problems Hallelujah. oh that you would win the heavens oh God that you would come down that the mountains might shake at your presence the mountains would flow down at his presence Nothing could stand in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. He can snap his finger and the mountain would crumble. Yeah. It's been said that many times about California. One day he's going to just snap his fingers and it's going to fall off into the ocean. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a bad idea. <laughs> but let me get my place sold. Before that happens. <laughs> but mountains would flow down at his presence. Nothing could stand in the presence of God. His manifest presence would break down every barrier, sweep every uh, sweep away everything that hindered him. There's a lot of things trying to hinder the move of God. But his presence, his presence will make all of that change. Amen. Nothing can stand under the presence of God. He saw that God's fire would melt the people, bring them together by His power. He saw that the waters would be made to boil so the lukewarmness would vanish. I'm convinced we got a church that is, all, that is in much, much of the state of lukewarmness. I, I got a feeling that John the Revelator knew what he was talking about when he wrote to the church and said, you're lukewarm. Yes. I would that you were hot or cold. Because you're neither hot or cold, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Yes. The church has got to get turned on again. Amen. Got to get excited. I can remember when people would come through the, altar, through the back doors and run to the altars because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, preacher... You're the one responsible for the anointing. No. Am I? No. Church, we are. That's right. We are. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've seen people that run to the altar, give their lives to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Drug addicts change in the moment. Yeah. 
And, and, and the very second they knelt down to the, to the altar, God would change their hearts. Wasn't a nine month program, a 12 month program. It was a five minute program. It was a lifetime program. God changed them. Best of all, God's name would be made known to, the, to his adversaries. Skepticism would be swept away. And his people would tremble at his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. I think, can I tell you something? I think that's the thing that hurts me the most. There's no fear of God in the house of God. There's no reverence of God anymore. We gotta, we gotta be just like, we gotta be just like the sporting events. Now I've been to a few sporting events in my life. Some I would not let what activities went on there dart in the, in the door of the church. Somebody said, well, Pastor, you're having a hard time competing. I'm not in competition with the world. Amen. You might be. If you are, you're on a losing That's right. battle. That's right. my, my warfare is against powers. Yes. Yes. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. It's not against NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Amen. Or baseball. Mm. Or football. We'll throw that in. <laughs> but we have our kids so busy today. Uh, this this era that we live in has taken the family out of church. Mm. Has taken the you know when I was growing up. And I know that there's a lot of stuff written about this. But when I was growing up, like many of you, Sunday was a day off. Right. Amen. You know, we were not even allowed to go fishing on Sunday because that was a sin. Amen. It was a sin to go fishing on Sunday. Now it just doesn't matter. If we make it, we make it. How many are ready to start preaching with me? I can, I can go a little bit longer. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got ourselves so busy. So busy that we don't have time for the things of God. I understand we have to work to make a living. Don't think, I don't understand that. This is, you think, well, Pastor, you get Monday through Friday off. <laughs> That's simply not true. I gotta work on Wednesday. <laughs> That's what some people think. It's not a matter of I don't think you should work. I'm talking about being so busy with the little things. That's right. So busy with the little things that it begins to pull us away from God. We need an earth-shaking revival in our lives. Our homes need a revival. Our churches need a revival. This nation, this world needs a revival. No military power can change it. No military power can bring revival. No economic upturn can bring revival. No election can bring a revival. What can bring revival? When his presence shows up. When God shows up. Why does the church grow? Why does it flourish? Why do people attend? What makes a church successful? When God comes down and brings an earth-shaking revival. Amen. Amen. That's church, we need God to come down. Amen. We need a visitation 
of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not we're not the reason for revival. Did you know that? The pastor is not the reason for revival. The associate pastor isn't the reason for revival. The worship pastor isn't the re reason for revival. The children's pastor, the seniors' ministry, the women's ministry, the men's ministry, none of that. Not even, not even the prayer team is the reason for revival. None of that brings an earth shaking revival. Only the presence. Of God. When God shows up, when God shows up, you'll have revival. You'll have revival. Hallelujah. Revival solves a lot of problems. I've seen churches that are so engulfed with infighting. So engulfed with infighting. I've seen churches literally split on the uh -huh. over the color of the carpet. <laughs> I see them split whether you're gonna have chairs or pews. If you're not gonna have chairs, you're gonna keep pews, we're going down the road to the church that's got chairs. I see them split on the color of the exterior paint. <laughs> uh, some of you are smiling. I know you thought, where did you come up with that color? No <laughs> coffee. That was, by the way, a border-proof color. I said, if we get in trouble, we're all going to get in trouble. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But that's no reason to split a church. I think it's funny. I had somebody in my church, or excuse me, in my office one day, uh, right as we were paying the church, sat in my office and laughed. They were leaving the church. I hope it wasn't the color, but they laughed at the color of the church. And I thought, you know, <laughs> but we have similar conditions that Isaiah had God's people have been carried into captivity his work was in despair people were uh, dispirited a lot like the believers today the church has been carried into captivity by the world, by the flesh, by the devil Christians are discouraged many have no hope for revival they don't even believe revival is possible. There's hardly any evangelists out there to have revival. Not that an evangelist brings revival, but they've, they've stopped having revivals. Why is there no revival? Listen to me carefully. Not because of liberalism in the churches. Not because of disunity among God's people. Not because we've been worldly and compromise. Friend, if you get all those things, all those matters changed, the church still could not have revival. Because those aren't the reasons for revival. Those are results of no revival, but they're not re reasons for revival. Re revival comes to a church when God comes down. Amen. I pray God begin to infiltrate this church again. Amen. Somebody say, I'm offended by that statement. That's why we need revival. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. If that statement offended you, we need it more than we, than we thought. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Ghost moving in this church. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh, that you, Almighty God, will rid the heavens 
that you would come down in the mountain, that the mountains might shake at your presence. Revival is a meeting with Almighty God. It's not a meeting with a presbytery. It's not a meeting with a, a drama club. It's not a meeting with a theater group. It's not a meeting with a worship team. It's a meeting with Almighty God. Most of us seek God to do something for our church, our family, our nation. We need that. But we are, are we seeking God's hand or are we seeking His face? Many of us want what God can do for us. Come on, God, I want, to, I want you to touch me so I can feel better. Yes, I'd like to feel better. Mm -hmm. yep. But I don't want him to touch me for that reason. Yeah. I want him to touch me so I can have an intimate relationship with him. Yeah. So my passion can be restored. So this yeah. church's passion can be restored. Yeah. You're seeking his hand, not his face. Yeah. Our heart needs to yearn for God. Yes. We should be saying, oh God, will you come down? Yes. Yes. God would love to come down. He always came down. He came down and opened the Red Sea for Israel. He came down and fed the children of Israel for 40 years. He came down and spewed water from a rock in a desert place. He came down and fell and knocked the walls of Jericho down. He came down and consumed the sacrifice and the light this day along with 12 barrels of water. Amen. He came down to a widow woman and fed her till, her till the drought was broken. He came down when Jesus stepped out of heaven to save us. Amen. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down and baptized the infant church with a wonderful power. Yes. And Jesus is coming down again very soon. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And if you study the record of the church, if you'll study the record of the church in modern history, you'll find from time to time, in place to place, God has always come down. And my desire is, my God in heaven, come down today. Come down to this place. I want God to come down upon this church, come down upon you. Oh, God, to grab you, shake you, melt you. Hallelujah. Break you. Fill you. Yes. Hallelujah. You know what the problem is? Hallelujah. It's not Biden. It's not Kamala Harris. It's not racial profiling. It's not Bruce Jenner. <laughs> you know what it is many of us don't believe it's possible anymore we don't think it's possible those days are gone those days of revival are gone don't get the idea that America has to be changed before it can have revival You and I can have revival. Yes. Yes, Lord. You can have a personal revival. You can have revival in your Sunday school class. Amen. Hallelujah. You can have revival in your prayer meeting. You can have revival in your family. Amen. You can have revival whenever and wherever. That's right. You can be a one person revival. That's right. Come on. Amen. God still wants to have revival, even if it's just with you. Amen. Many of you got, have got issues you've been praying. God, help me, help me, help me. God's ready to, to do what you're asking me to do. Yes. Hallelujah. He's ready to bring revival to your home, to your family. So those that are struggling with drugs and alcohol can be delivered. For those who are having family issues, Husbands and wives and children. God can heal that. He can do a revival in that family. 
It's the presence that produces revival. Yes. yes. God Himself. When God comes set down, things will happen. Mountains will melt. He said, verses one and two, that the mountains might flow down and in thy presence as with the melting fire. Mountains will melt. Mountains of pride, mountains of bigotry, mountains of indifference, yes. obstacles to God's work. Yes. They're all going to melt away. Nothing can stop the revival of Almighty God. Let me say that again. Nothing can stop the revival Amen. of Almighty God. Well, what if they tell us to wear a mask again? That's not going to stop the revival of God. <laughs> Amen. What if they tell us we can't have but ten people? That's not going to stop the revival of God. He said, well, one or two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst. Hallelujah. There he is in our midst. Nothing can stop revival fires. Don't insult God by saying there are too many mountains, too many obstacles. When he comes down and melts, mountains will melt away. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I believe yes. that. Yeah. Amen. Sinners will be shaken. Yes. Come on. Nothing in her any better than seeing a sinner. Give his heart to the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I see people the sitting on the old pews, and the old bench style pews. Remember those that had the one by four slats? <laughs> How many ever sat on one of those? Let me tell you something. You get one of them that grabs your backside one time. <laughs> You'll do some shouting yourself. You come up from there, and if your britches will let you get off of there, you come up and you'll do some shouting. People think you got revival. They'll think that Mississippi squirrel got loose in there somewhere. Sinners will shake, he said. To make your name known to your adversaries that nations may tremble at your presence. You come down, the mountains shook at your presence. Sinners will shake. People will come into the house of God and they'll try to sit through a service. They can't get through a service without crying and weeping and making their way to the altar. God, I long for that again. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I long for that again. Well, we don't want to interrupt your... You know, I get tired of getting blamed for people's shortcomings on that. We don't want to interrupt you coming down to the altar, Pastor. Do you think Jake and his boys interrupts us? No. When they come down no. to this altar? No. Absolutely not. No. I'm sitting there saying, thank you, Jesus. Because I know one day he's going to spend some time down there and God's going to touch him like he's never been touched before. God's going to heal him. He's been praying for an emotional healing for years. And one day he's going to be down here with his boys praying and the Holy Ghost is going to shake him every which way but looks. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to say, get out of those altars. That's why they're there. That's right. They're too small if you ask me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not enough of them. Amen. When the law sees something they can't explain. See, when sinners come into the church and they see something, wow, what in the world was that? <laughs> what happened? What happened? They look over to somebody else and say, Did you see that? When they see something they can't explain. When Holy when the Holy Spirit conviction falls, yes. the sinner begins to shake. Yes. Yes. God will change them. Yes. Hallelujah. 
if we have revival in America, late night comedians will not make fun of the holy things of Almighty God. They do now. But if revival takes place, that'll stop. The impure will shake in the presence of God. The unsaved will cry out for mercy. And the righteous will rejoice. Hallelujah. Verse five, 4 and 5. Since the beginning of the world, men have not heard uh, nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any, um, any God besides you who acts, who acts for the one who waits for him. You meet with him, you meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you and your ways. God wants to meet with you. Hallelujah. He wants to come down. And when he comes down, church is not boring. Amen. Robert, church won't be boring when God comes down. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me, preacher? Austin, it won't be so boring when God comes down. That's one of the main things teenagers will tell you today is church is so boring. That preacher is so boring. How many ever said that? <laughs> Besides ten. <laughs> but I don't know, he said it. he said it to my face. <laughs> you know what I told him? You get what you pay for. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Church won't be boring. That's right. Yes. The Holy Ghost shows up. God's people will have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. The righteous will rejoice. Hallelujah. Church, I long to see that. Hallelujah. Amen. I long to see people just weeping in the spirit of the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I love to say, <laughs> you ever see anybody just laugh in the spirit? Amen. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. When I was a young man, there was a church in Orville that we went to. You may know the church. It was on Fallbrook Avenue. There was a, a little man who went to that church. I just remember his name as being Brother John. And he must have been 90 years old. His wife had passed years before. And he had had total, two total hip replacements. And he did not walk. He literally had to do this. Kind of like, you see me walk? I, I don't walk, I shuttle. You know. And we would start having service and the Holy Ghost would hit him. And he had let out a little, very quiet, very quiet, but a little bitty war hoop. And he'd step out to the center of that aisle and he'd take off. <laughs> dancing to the front of that church and dancing to the back of it. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Thrill my heart. I want to see that again. Amen. People so excited. The joy of the Lord. Yes. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Why wouldn't we want that? Why wouldn't we want more strength than we've had before? Oh, God, to meet with his people so they know this incredible joy. So what stands in the way of this outpouring? Just ask you that quick question. What stands in the way of this outpouring? I don't want you to answer it out loud. I want you to search your heart. Remember, the outpouring is for you. Personally, what stands in your way of this outpouring? 